Welcome back to my channel. This is a short video about crazy Leica moon photography. And what I'm going to show here, and you see it here in front of me on the table, is indeed a setup which is a bit crazy. At least in my opinion, it's totally unusual and also creative. And what we have here is my Leica SL2 camera body. And then I have a Leica R lens, which I'm going to show in a moment, and various other gear, all of that stacked together and then mounted on the Leica SL2 camera body. And this setup actually enabled me to take sharp and crisp images of the full moon. What surprised me even more is that when in an experimental way, I tried to enhance these moon images by using the Leica SL2 multi-shot feature, it actually worked and provided even better footage. And that is something which did not work with other camera systems. I also tried it with the Fuji GFX100S. It didn't work. I'm going to explain why. But here in the Leica setup, it worked. It is a bit crazy, but it delivered nice footage. And now let's kick off the video. Now, if I want to take photos of the moon with my Leica SL2, I need a tele lens. And the natural choice natively sitting in the Leica SL lens lineup is this lens here with a focal length from 90 to 280 millimeters. It's a very good lens. I've shot this lens very often. It's very heavy glass and uh, the images coming from that lens are very, very sharp. But my problem is that 280 millimeter focal length is not bringing me close enough to the moon. And clearly you could argue now that based on the resolution reserves we have on the Leica SL2, we can later in post do a digital crop and in this way making the moon appearing bigger, but it comes with a loss of quality and it's actually not what I'm looking for. So I had to come up with an alternative solution here. Like often for Leica shooters, if you don't find a native solution, in the Leica SL system, why don't you look a little bit around what else is available in the Leica universe. And on the Leica M side, we don't have very long focal length lenses, but in the Leica R system, we actually find long tele lenses. And we have here a Leica R lens, which is the Apotelut R widest open F4, 280 millimeters. So same focal length as natively we found it in the Leica SL lens lineup. But for Leica R lenses, we actually have a two times teleconverter or extender. And that brings us to 560 millimeter focal length all in. Clearly it also has an influence on the aperture. If you double the focal length with a teleconverter like the Apo extender R two times, you also have to multiply the aperture by two and widest open F4 then means widest open F8, but that's just good enough for moon photography. And what I also wanted to share is that this is a very special lens, probably worthwhile a separate review. This Apotelut R124 280 millimeters was manufactured and sold by Leica only around give or take 2000 times. So this lens is very rare and has a significant price in the secondary market. It's also worthwhile to mention that this lens has a sibling where you can actually open the aperture even wider by one stop at f2.8 and that lens with f2.8 widest open has the double volume and the double weight but interestingly enough is not as expensive in the secondary market as this lens with more stop down aperture of f4. Very likely the reason why this lens is so expensive and so rare is that many people in the community agree that this might be the sharpest Leica lens ever produced. and. Uh, I'm not, I think, qualified to judge about that. There are Leica lenses which I find sharper and others are less sharp, but with a more dreamy look. What have you, that's all fine. But what I can confirm is that this lens is super sharp. And uh, the minimum focusing distance on that lens is 1 meter 70. And uh, people who follow me on my channel will remember that most Leica M lenses actually have a minimum focusing distance of 70 centimeters. Here you have to go away by one more meter, so one meter 70 centimeters. And the magnification ratio of that lens is one divided by five, so 20%. But if you combine it with the Apo extender R two times, the magnification ratio or maximum reproduction ratio actually increases to one divided by two, so 50%. And this setup then becomes a true tele macro lens and uh, based on the incredible sharpness of that lens might be worthwhile to be tested in a different video. So 
quite an interesting setup. The additional gear I need here is my adapter from Leica R mount to Leica L mount and I don't have here the original Leica adapter because I can live very well with the Novoflex adapter is much cheaper and gets the job done. Before sharing the result of my crazy Leica moon shooting, let me add a few remarks. First of all, if you want to shoot the moon with a camera, make sure it's on spot metering. This can be adjusted on the Leica SL2 in the usual way. Also make sure that the metering field is actually on the surface of the moon. The second remark I want to make is that in contrast to night sky photography where you go for long exposures and high ISO values, for moon shootings it's actually the opposite. You need comparably fast shutter speed and you need to make sure that your ISO is comparably low. And a good rule of thumb is the number 200. Go for 1 divided by 200 seconds in terms of exposure time and choose an ISO of 200 and then you will be fine. And uh, that's basically it. And now let me share the result of my crazy Leica moon shooting and then let me conclude the video. As you can see here, the multi-shot feature always works. The question is, is the result the result I want to have? And for the Leica SL2, in contrast to the Fuji GFX100S, it really worked as we will see now when we go into post and look into the results. Here's the multi-shot result on the left-hand side as it came out of camera raw, but already cropped in. Right-hand side, the moon after post-processing. On the very left-hand side, you see my adjustments on the sliders in Lightroom and clearly this is a good result and in particular since the multi-shot feature worked for the moon despite the fact that the moon is rotating around earth and therefore has motion blurriness and I come to that point at the end of the video again. I'm very happy with that moon shot and to be honest I didn't expect it to come out that nicely so I think that experiment succeeded in the way I hoped it will succeed. The multi-shot feature clearly brought that boost in resolution that when cropping in we get a much better image of the moon. Here on the left hand side you see the multi-shot 187 megapixels, on the right hand side you see the 47 megapixels and this is a not cropped in frame as it came out of camera in RAW and if I go to 100% magnification you actually see how much we gain by the multi-shot here on the left hand side because on the right hand side the moon looks good but is still too small and by using the large resolution coming from the multi-shot I can kind of simulate an even longer focal length than the 560 millimeters I had here at my disposal. Clearly I had to try out the same setup with the suitable adapter on the Fuji GF X100. But it didn't work and I'm going to explain in a moment why it didn't work. And uh, that is a pity because otherwise I would have had a 400 megapixel image here. The question is why did the multi-shot feature for moon photography not work on the Fuji GF X100S? Although I mounted the same equipment like here this Apotelut R lens and the 2 times extender and then of course the suitable adapter to mount Leica R lenses to the Fuji GFX body. And it didn't work because if we go on the Fuji GFX 100S into drive mode here and we go down to multi shot, let me try to go there then you actually here have the interval settings and you have one second between the shots, two seconds, five seconds, 15 seconds and you also have here on the very left hand side short. But it seems that there is still a significant delay between the frames taken in the multi-shot feature of the GFX 100S and that delay is too long even at one divided by 200 seconds of exposure time and the moon will have moved on when you come to the very last frame. And that makes the frames blurry, they do not fit together if you stack them together and they don't provide the same clarity as you saw it on the Leica SL2. That's my guess why it didn't work. If you have a different explanation, let me know. But in general, I think Fuji should actually make sure that like on the Leica SL2, there is absolutely no delay between shots and then 16 frames with one divided by 200 seconds exposure time will actually be in total quick enough to get the moon crisp and clear 
and to not get the moon blurry in the way I got it out of the Fuji GFX 100S in the comparable setup. So because the Fuji in their multi-shot feature has still some delay between the frames, the Fujifilm pixel shift combiner was not able to complete the jobs without flaws and was not able to align the frames. And that created a very blurry image as we can see here now, as soon as the Fuji pixel shift combiner has completed the job of stacking the frames. So for moon photography, and that's my conclusion, the multi-shot feature on the GFX cameras from Fuji is not working because of that interval or delay even at the shortest setting between the consecutive frames in the multi-shot procedure. And uh, nevertheless, I wanted to look at the single frame and that single frame with then give or take 100 megapixels actually looks quite good. But you cannot climb up to the close to 200 megapixels what you get on the Leica SL2, despite the fact that it would be quite nice to actually leverage a 400 megapixel image from the GFX for moon photography. I hope you liked my video about my crazy Leica moon photography setup here. And uh, clearly it's a special setup, but it worked very, very well. And uh, I think this lens really deserves a separate review. I will think about doing this and then posting much more details about that amazing lens. As most of you will know, the Leica R system has been discontinued since 2009. And nevertheless today, at least in my photography, Leica R lenses still play a very meaningful, very important role in my Leica photography. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come and for yourself of course and the ones you love, stay safe and healthy and peace out.